Hello, it's Abbott Austin for another episode of Talk Lexio, and we'll do Lexio Divina uh, this time uh, with Luke, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. This is from this Sunday's Gospel reading. I'm going to, um, this has been a while since I've done a Talk Lexio, and I'm going to post this on YouTube rather than on Facebook as in the past. Uh, but as usual, we'll follow the four steps of Lexio Divina. So we'll first read the passage with faith, attentive to what God is trying to say to us through this biblical passage. Then we'll meditate, that is, think about the passage, see what God is trying to see what God is saying to us. And then we'll offer a prayer, a prayer of petition to the Lord based on our meditation. And then finally, uh, just rest in the Lord's presence after that in contemplation. So let's begin with prayer. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, open my, my heart and my mind to understand your scriptures through Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I'll read the passage um, once here, and it's again Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. While the crowd was pressing in on Jesus and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. He saw two boats there alongside the lake. The fishermen had disembarked and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats the one belonging to Simon, he asked him to put out a short distance from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. After he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and lower your nets for a catch. Simon said in reply, Master, we have worked hard all night and have caught nothing, but at your command I will lower the nets. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their nets were tearing. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come to help them. They came and filled both boats so that the boats were in danger of sinking. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus and said, Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For astonishment at the catch of fish they had made seized him and all those with him, and likewise James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners of Simon. Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. When they brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. So it's our passage. Um, sometimes it helps to read it multiple times. So you can rewind this recording and listen to it again. I'll also put the reading in the um, description below this video post. So now having read attentively with faith that this is God speaking to us, we now move on to meditation and as I've said before, you know, with meditation, it, you really need a, a starting point, something that catches your attention and gets you thinking about the text so you can start entering into the riches of Scripture. So there's a lot in this passage. This is, um, there's a really a lot of things to think about. It's a very interesting story, kind of one of the much celebrated stories in the uh, Gospels. So one thing, though, we might think about is work. And the work we see in this passage is fishing, that kind of labor or work, uh, the work of fishing. But notice um, there's three kind of instances of uh, work here. So we can look at uh, the past work, fishing in the past, that is. So when Jesus says to Simon Peter, you know, lower your nets for a catch, Simon Peter then recalls, well, we did that. Right? So that's what I'm referring to, this past uh, work that was done. They worked all night. They didn't, it didn't work very well. They didn't catch much. And then there's a current work uh, in the passage itself, the, um, that work of fishing, where Jesus says, put out your nets, and then they get this abundant uh, catch. It's an amazing catch. It's sinking two boats. It's so great, and their, their nets are tearing and so forth. So those are the past work and then the current work in the reading itself. Um, there is a, a reference, though, to future work, uh, and that's the work where Jesus says to him, from now on, you will be catching men. So they'll be fishers of men. So um, there'll be a worker fishing, you know, figuratively speaking, fishing in the future as well. So there's a reference to future work in this passage as well. So what can we say about um, work in this, in light of this? Well, perhaps we can meditate on, um, you know, if you look at the first two instances of uh, work, um, what you have is the past work wasn't very fruitful, it was futile. And so our work is futile without the Lord, without God being part of it in it. And uh, indeed, uh, our work being ordered to the glory of God. Uh, if that's the case, then our work does end up being futile, at least in the in the long term. It's lasting fruit. It's eternal fruit will be futile if the Lord is not involved. And this is something we can think about with regard to that psalm that says, 
um, unless the Lord build the house, they labor in vain who build it, right? So there is um, a futility to our work if God's not part of it, if God's not in it, so to speak. But then in the, uh, the, pa- the work that's done in the gospel where they lower the neck, it's abundant catch. Uh, the work is fruitful when Christ is involved, right? It's done under the direction of Christ at his bidding uh, and, and ultimately, you might say, for the glory of Christ. So um, when the Lord is involved, it is fruitful. Our work is fruitful. And there's a final thing you might think about um, with regard to that third incident of, uh, of work that uh, where they're fishers of men, they'll be catching men. So can we say um, that our work will draw other people to Christ um, if we do it with the Lord and the Lord's part of it and our inspiration and gives us a direction and we're doing it for the glory of God. Um, Will our work draw others to men in this way? Will it be fruitful for Christ? And uh, I think there's a sense in which that's true. And this is true, I think, even if The work we're doing is not explicitly religious work. It's not ministerial work. Um, Still, if we do it for, you know, it's inspired by God and it's done for the Lord's sake, right? And the New Testament speaks about this at times that, you know, the the work uh, we do is done out of thanksgiving and for the glory of God. Um, You do it for the Lord. And and it can bring, uh, it can be a witness to Christ and help bring people to Christ. Again, even if it's not religiously explicit work. I think there's a truth there something to think about. So having done our meditation, now we move to the third step of Lexia Divina, which is to offer a prayer. And I recommend it making a prayer of petition, asking the Lord for something based on the meditation. So I'll offer such a prayer now, and I invite you to offer your prayer as well. Almighty God, I ask that you be a part of all the work I do, that you be its inspiration, and may it be done under your direction and for your glory so that whatever I do, it may give witness to you and help others to come closer to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And then the fourth step of Lexi Divina is contemplation. And as I uh, sometimes say, you know, one way of looking at this is we've we've come close to the Lord. If we pray for something good, then we're, we're actually seeking and wanting something good. Our will lines up with God's will, who wants everything that's good. And so, um, we experience a closeness with the Lord. So we just rest in that. And so let's just observe a few moments of contemplative rest. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Thanks to all for, uh, who have joined me for this uh, prayer for the Lexi Divina, and may God bless you. Please pray for us here at St. Procopius Abbey. God bless.